Hello everyone, welcome to today's presentation, Stepping Stones Along Your Career Development Pathway. We may think that once we graduate, point A, we will immediately find a job in our field of study, point B. In reality, career development is a process. You may take several steps between graduating and finding a career you're passionate about. Additionally, the job search and job application process can take several months, so it's important to start early. This can mean learning how to make a resume and cover letter and researching companies or positions you're interested in. The good thing is, if you dedicate yourself to your career development, you will eventually get to where you want to be. In this presentation, we will be covering how to prepare for employment before or after graduation, the difference between hard and soft skills, the benefits of continuing your education, the types of employment to look for with your diploma, and lastly, the importance of investing in yourself and your career development. What is career development? Career development is the steps you can take to further your professional development. This could be continuing your education to gain more knowledge, which is what you are doing now. It could also be learning a new skill to enhance your performance in a role or completing a field-related certification. And lastly, it could be starting a new role that allows you to gain more experience in your field. For example, starting an entry-level position or even an internship. How to prepare. It's important to begin your career development with planning and goal setting. This way, you know where you want to be and how you plan to get there. The following five steps will help you do exactly that. Here are some questions to consider. Number one, self-assessment. What values, interests, skills, and talents do you possess? If you know what you value, you can choose a career path that aligns with who you are. Number two, goal setting. What are your short-term and long-term goals? Remember, the completion of your short-term goals should lead you to the completion of your long-term goals. Number three, make a plan. What steps do you need to take to achieve your goals? This can be educational requirements, certifications, or even improving soft skills such as time management or team leadership. Number four, execute your plan. This is where you put your plan into action. Remember to be patient and stay focused. Career development does not happen overnight. Number five, self-reflection. In what areas of your plan did you excel? In what areas do you need improvement? Self-reflection is an important step because it allows you to build upon your strengths and make the necessary changes in areas where you need improvement. Now we're going to discuss step number two, goal setting, in a little more detail. It is beneficial to divide your long-term goals into short-term, smaller, attainable goals. For example, maybe your long-term goal is to become a registered social service worker. This goal can be divided into the following short-term goals completing all educational requirements, certifications, gaining valuable work experience, as well as writing a tailored resume and cover letter. Now these short-term goals can be divided into smaller goals as well. For example, outline all the educational requirements needed to become a registered social service worker. This could be completing your SSW diploma and registering with the Ontario College of Social Workers and Social Service Workers. Consider what skills will be necessary in the role. For example, maybe skills like crisis management, advocacy, and group facilitation are important for this position. Consider volunteer opportunities or part-time jobs that are related to these skills to help you refine these skills and build up your resume. Additionally, certifications will make you more qualified for the position. For example, consider becoming certified in things like CPR and first aid, mental health first aid, and basic cardiac life support. By breaking down your long-term goals into smaller, more attainable goals, you will be better able to visualize a realistic timeline and your path will be easier to follow. Remember, setting goals is the first step to turning the invisible into the visible. When you graduate with a college diploma in SSW, you'll be eligible for membership with the Ontario College of Social Workers and Social Service Workers. If your long-term goal is to be when you graduate with a college diploma, you cannot call yourself a social service worker if you are not registered.
it is important to do your own research into the employment opportunities available in your field. Remember to use keywords and search multiple platforms when looking for these opportunities on websites such as Indeed or LinkedIn. Some questions to keep in mind are, what positions are currently available and are of interest to you? For example, positions related to SSW may include registered social service worker, gerontologist, or gerontology nurse. You may work in facilities and settings that include, but are not limited to, government agencies, non-for-profit agencies such as long-term care facilities, group homes, community agencies, or for-profit facilities such as retirement homes. What are the requirements for the position? For example, you should research what certifications may be required or preferred. And lastly, what experiences and skills do you have that are applicable to the position? This can include hard skills or soft skills. Maybe you've gained skills from part-time jobs, such as your verbal communication skills, that will be valuable to your future career. When you are looking for a job, there are various external job banks you can use. For example, Indeed, Glassdoor, Joblist, Workopolis. If there are companies that you are interested in working at, you can visit the company website and view their careers page or visit the company page on LinkedIn to see if the company is hiring for any open positions. Some keywords to use in the search engine include, but are not limited to, social service worker, gerontology, home support worker, and personal support worker. Look at job postings on company websites in places like retirement homes, long-term care homes, homeless shelters, and food banks. Networking is also an important part of the career development process. Making connections in the social spaces you are already a part of is a great place to start. This includes talking to your teachers, placement coordinators, colleagues at your workplace, or placement. This provides an opportunity to develop your social skills and expand your professional network. Who knows, someone you meet could recommend you to an employer or even provide a job reference for you. Making connections through online platforms like LinkedIn allows you to connect with people who are already in your field of work or who may work at a company that you're interested in. You can gain valuable insight and advice that may help you land a job. Lastly, attending networking events is another great way to make connections with those who have practical working experience in your field. Employers will be looking for applicants who have a range of hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills are teachable and measurable skills. They include technical abilities acquired through formal education and training. For example, proficiency with specific softwares. Soft skills are a combination of interpersonal skills, personality traits, and emotional intelligence. For example, active listening. If you visit the Government of Canada Job Bank, go to Labour Market Info and search Social Services Worker, you can view the list of skills that are required for this position. Some of the skills include, but are not limited to, service and care, communication, information handling, and analysis. Continuing your education will help you stay informed and up to date after you graduate. This will allow you to enhance your knowledge of the field, learn a new skill, or refine your current skills and knowledge. You can always sign up for online courses that are delivered through colleges, universities, and online course providers. You could enroll in another post-secondary program to further develop your knowledge and skills. For example, some students may choose to pursue further education in social community development, addiction and mental health work, or obtain a Bachelor of Social Work. However, this all depends on your long-term goals. Another option is to find free courses online. Continuing your education also includes completing courses or certificates that are relevant to your field. Completing professional certificates, which are widely known to employers, is beneficial for career development because you can expand your knowledge base, enhance your credibility and marketability, and improve your performance in the field. A quick Google search can redirect you to websites that offer free courses and certificates. Some of these include, but are not limited to, LinkedIn Learning, Coursera, and Udemy. You can find beginner courses and programs to refine your skills and knowledge, or courses that will help you advance in your career goals. A benefit is that they often allow you to learn at your own pace. 
continuing your education also includes completing certifications and trainings that are relevant to your field. Professional certifications will also show employers that you have a more thorough understanding of the field of work and the necessary qualifications. Some certifications and trainings to consider for the field of SSW are first aid and CPR, suicide prevention, and crisis intervention and prevention training. An entry-level position is a great employment opportunity for students and new graduates and only requires minimal education and professional work experience. This provides an opportunity to gain direct work experience in your field and gain entry into an organization where you can work your way up to higher positions within the company. Additionally, it provides networking opportunities and the possibility to gain a reference. Here is an example of an entry-level job. Sprint Senior Care is hiring a community recreation activity worker. It is important to read through the entire job posting and description to determine key responsibilities, skills, and experience needed for the position, as well as eligibility requirements. Understanding the position and duties and responsibilities will allow you to better cater your resume to the position. For example, they are looking for someone who is enrolled or has completed a gerontology program. They are also looking for someone who has good communication skills and is organized. These are skills you can highlight in your resume. Again, read the job description thoroughly so that you understand what type of employee they are looking for. Remember, all the time and energy you put towards your career development is an investment into yourself. If you expand your knowledge base, develop your hard and soft skills, and complete field-related certifications, it will help you progress within your field of study. Most importantly, be confident in yourself and stay focused on your goals and never give up. The day you plant the seed is not the day you will eat the fruit. Did you know that on Acumen's website, we have a job posting board? You can find job openings at different companies in the GTA that are related to your program of study. The job posting board is updated bi-weekly. Use this as a resource to see what is available while you study or when you become an alumni. At ACE Acumen Academy, we provide a range of career services to help students along their career development pathway. This includes resume and cover letter writing, LinkedIn profile editing, job searches, job applications, and interview preparation. You can book an appointment with one of our career services advisors and they'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you and good luck with your studies and future career.